All right, so we're going to model out this wing. Now keep in mind, I've, I've been showing you the same tool over and over again. So if you wanted to try to model the rest without me, you know, I wouldn't feel bad about that at all. I'll, I'll keep modeling, but uh, keep note, this is where I usually tell students, if you're using this video, that everything that I've shown you now can be answered quite well, and you can just go about your merry way and try to figure out this wing. The thing I will tell you though is I'm going to model the wing straight and then lastly make it bend up. Okay. So another thing I tell students is it's very important to know that attaching all forms isn't really necessary. Like this form right here onto this form, sure we can do that, that's no big deal. But uh, they're two different textures, two different animals. Uh, probably two different materials altogether because I noticed the thruster, the thruster unit right there is a, a blackish type right here. So it's probably a different type of material. Anytime there's a material change, I kind of leave it as is that that's going to be a separate part altogether. Besides the fact I have not shown you how to join two forms yet. that's in the later lesson well next lesson actually so what I'm doing here is kind of uh, looking at the overall part of this wing so how wide is it so what I'm going to do is first start out very simple with this and work on the largest form first And the largest form is on this side. So I'm just going to match this up. And take these vertices. And shift them on down the line. Good. So I'm going to grab this face here and then jump back into my top view. See, I'm, I'm jumping a lot. You know, I'm always jumping into views. So this time I'm just going to make a little tiny edge loop right there. And I'm going to extrude it one more time. And then take this one and move the vertice down. I then have to jump back to my perspective window to grab that edge again, or that face. In my 2011, it, it's a little harder to grab faces. You know, in 20 or 2009, the one thing I they didn't have is this active highlight thing, so you can grab. You could have grabbed a face in um, a different view, like an orthographic view. You know, you can you can make that happen again. I just haven't turned it on yet. And all I do is have to grab the part for each part I need that to happen with and display polygons face centers. Okay, this way I can grab this little tiny face center here in face mode. Sometimes. <laughs> so that should be highlighted there to check it out. Nope. Yeah, as I said, it's it's one of those things that, uh, you know, I like the active selection mode, but I'm kind of cursed with it also. Because <laughs> I always have to jump into perspective mode just to get the stupid face again. So what I'm going to do is make a, a small form change right here, just a little itty bitty form change. And then I'm going to decide later to make it a larger form change. Because I see 
that that shape is going to be a real hard thing to make unless I do it the right way. This this change right here is kind of hard. Okay, to do that, all I do is have to go to the move tool and move this out all the way. And then go into this, grab the face on this side, extrude it. And I'm not sure how much, so I go back into my other view. Good. And lastly, take these two faces right here on the edge of the wing and extrude it one more time out. So there we go. Now I have all those, all that change happen right there. Not, looks really good. Cool. And then again, all I do is have to worry about bracing my form, right? Search edge loop. So how do I brace this one? Well, I brace it here. This actually is a, a very boxy type wing. So I'm just going to put an edge loop around the outside interior and exterior. And make sure there's something in this region to support this little change in this area. And something in the very end to support that also. So if I hit 3, it should smooth out rather well. Again, when I'm all done, I assign an existing material, Lambert 5. And that way I can kind of see how that looks. It almost feels a little bit too boxy. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of maybe grab some of these vertices. And just scale them just a little bit this way. Just a skosh. That's going to give me more of a rounded edge on this side. See, it kind of give me a beveled look. All right, let's set this down onto the form. So in later lessons, I'll show you how to blend these two forms together and connect two forms. For right now, we're only worried about um, making forms that kind of fit together. Okay, that's this lesson. That sit well together and look nice together without being actually on top of each other. Okay, I see one maybe thing that I would change, and that is this area. Inserting an edge loop right here. Yep, give it that harder edge look. Okay, the last thing we have to worry about is this one. Okay, this little part. And I'll begin the change here. I'll, I'll start it here and then model it in the next video. So all I need is another tube. Now you're going to be using tubes a lot. So usually what I do is, is take and make only one tube and then set it off to the side by duplicating it. And then that way I never have to make that again. So object mode, highlight this back, mesh smooth. There we go. Go back into object mode. And if I duplicate this and throw it off to the side here, I never have to make that change again. That's what I'm talking about. All right, now meet me in the next video where we start modeling this pylon coming off the side.